What's up, it's Marco, Sage of Soccer, and the United States just drew 0-0 with Saudi Arabia in a really disappointing game, and before I get into the actual analysis of the game, like, you saw the title, so I want to explain my reasoning for that. Berhalter out. It's not going to happen right before the World Cup, but before this window, I was doing a preview of Japan, and because that was a really crucial game for us. I really want to see how we could do. I want to be as prepared as possible to know what that Japan squad is going to give us. And in one of those uh, Japan uh, previews, I was looking at it from a Japanese perspective, uh, there was a resource that uh, painted a picture of this American team, and it said, uh, the U.S. tries to rely too much on power and athleticism all the time, but that doesn't work at a higher level. You need to be more tech, uh, tactically sound in order to get to the highest level at the World Cup. And... I read that quote, and it wasn't by the person who wrote the article, it was from somebody else, but I read that quote, and I thought, man, this guy didn't do his research for this game. This team has changed so much, and he's just relying on past information. We've changed as a nation since those days. But I look at these last two games, and he was right. We failed to change the way the world views American soccer. And... I think that's a failure of Burhalter. That was his goal coming into this, and it didn't work. From a tactical point of view, we were just going long and trying to counter. Like, I didn't understand that early in the game. Why not press this Saudi Arabian team that was giving the ball away under minimal pressure? Like, I mean, it wasn't us just preparing for the World Cup and acting like solely how we're going to be t uh, treating bigger games. Like, no, we went to long against this team because we saw Saudi Arabia play a high line and we tarreled our game to that Saudi team. Why not press them? That could have worked easily. That could have worked very well. Get the best out of Parioli. He was on the field for 60 minutes. Have him play to his strengths. Um, man, this wasn't even a good Saudi Arabia team. Like, forget how they're unlikely to win a game at the World Cup. This wasn't even them at their best. We should have dominated. This wasn't a Japanese team that was pretty good. There was no intensity to how we were playing. Like, and it's, this has happened a lot. Like, I, there's something in this coaching staff where they just can't get this team going. There's no motivation. I, I just look at it, and I think the culture has gotten so much worse since the start of World Cup qualifying when uh, we had an interview. I think it was Tyler Adams says, Man, we're going to go out there and we're going to get nine points. No problem. Like, it was cocky, but I loved the energy. Like, now we just coasted through this game. Like, this is the type of thing that I expect from, like, the Michael Bradley teams. Like, it was just really disappointing to see. Like, and th that's not completely on Burhalter. That Some of this is on the players because we looked completely dead. Um, I think the main thing with the players for this game is we're hoping that Gio Reyna is healthy he was taken off at the 30th minute mark due to a muscle injury, or precaution, because there might have been a muscle injury. There was a little bit of tightness. He's probably not going to play the next two weeks for Dortmund. He's probably not going to come into the World Cup 100%. I, I'm not sure if he'll be able to start for us at this point, and it's disappointing. He was already on a minutes restriction. You, I don't think we can fault the—we can't fault Burhalter for this. This is the second time that he's gotten hurt while playing for the national team. I'm raising questions about our medical staff, but you just hope he's healthy. Uh, from an individual perspective, there wasn't a single good performer, uh, not one. Uh, so I'll start off with the average players. Um, I thought Ricardo Pepe was average. He didn't get involved. I don't think that's on him. We shouldn't expect our strikers to drop in deep and help with buildup. It's not his fault that our system sucks, but... I still think that he should be playing tonight with the U-20 teams rather than with this, uh, the full senior national team. I don't think he's done enough to be here, and he didn't show that today. I thought Pulisic was trying today. That's more than I can say for a lot of players. He was giving it his all, but it didn't result in anything. Uh, McKinney had a pretty bad giveaway, but other than that, I think he was doing pretty well in the midfield, controlling, not controlling the game, but actually trying to combine much better than our other two players, at least in possession. Uh, Walker Zimmerman was doing better when he had time on the ball. Um, I still think that he's, I think he's our fourth or fifth choice center back at the moment. I have him behind Richards, Cameron Carter-Vickers, Brooks, and possibly Tim Ream. Uh, he can hit a pass when he's not under pressure, but that's not a skill. Like, like you can 
like, listen, I criticize MLS players a lot, but I'm not like a Yaris snob. I did a video covering the top 100 players, in my opinion, entering top American, top 100 American prospects entering college. And when you look through a lot of those players, you can see, like, any center back can hit a ball when you have time and space. But when you're actually getting pressed, that's when you see who's really good on the ball. And when Zimmerman gets pressed, he's he's bad. Like, and he was he gave the ball away a good amount. I don't want to see him on the field anytime soon. I, th- I don't know. He doesn't seem like this on the field, but I get the picture that he's a decent leader off the field. So I'd have him as a fourth or fifth choice option, but I don't think he should play for us. Uh, Serginho Dest was trying in the attack. He was pretty bad in build-up play. I think that's because he was out on the left. There were just a couple times our ball went straight past him, and that's just inexcusable. But I thought he was doing pretty well defensively. Saudi Arabia were kind of attacking him, and I thought he dealt with it pretty well. Uh, DeAndre Edlin looks slightly better. I still don't want to see him on the field. But like Zimmerman, I want him as a bit of a veteran presence. And I think he showed that he is better than Reggie Cannon today. Joe Scali is a much better player than him. But I think as that uh, fourth fullback, I would take DeAndre Edlin. And uh, Matt Turner, he was good making saves. But again, he's he's bad with the ball at his feet. Um I think going back to like changing the way the world views American soccer, I don't think Matt Turner is a downgrade over like the previous American keepers. It's just the game's moved on, and he's still just like a guy who played in high school and played in college and picked up soccer late. Just was a natural at a goalkeeper and didn't develop those foot skills. Like that's not anything different than like a Tim Howard. But I don't think he's at Tim Howard's level not yet, at least. But he's. He's not a downgrade. He's still a good player, and I feel really safe when Matt Turner's in goal, and that's something I haven't been able to say with American goalkeepers since Tim Howard. On to the bad performances, and I guess there are only three I end up having. Uh, Aaron Long, he had too many bad giveaways. Lost a couple players defensively. Like, he shouldn't be in this team. Like, I, I don't want to be too hard on him because everybody knows it but and it just feels kind of mean at this point but he shouldn't be here uh Tyler Adams he was he had a good game defensively but you expect more from him in possession it's pretty clear that he doesn't work in this lone six role um in that role where he has to pick up the ball deep because we don't have center backs capable of uh playing with the ball um he just doesn't do well um I think we should switch to a 4-2-3-1. He's looked very good for Leeds in that formation against some good teams. He's a good player, but he doesn't show it in this system. And we know with Burhalter, the system is more important than any of the players. Like, who gets... Who looks good in this system? Like, who is it built around? Like, who stands out? Like, is there anybody who looks better playing in the national team than with their club? Like, I don't think there's anybody... Like, why Why do we play like this? I don't know. And uh, Kellen Acosta, I th- thought, had a bad game. Like, I wouldn't t- take him off the team, but he should never start for us. He's not good enough technically. There's a role for him coming off the bench and helping seal up a win. And uh, honestly, if we would have played him against Japan, against a team that's a lot more technical, where we would we could have played defensively and tried to counter, like, that would have made sense. Like, we shouldn't have. Luke De La Torre should be on the field ahead of him at all times, except in that specific situation where we want to seal up a win. But I I don't know what the idea was behind starting him. Like, and I should say, I want him on the team. He's one of the few players in the squad, him and uh, Weston McKinney, and I've seen it from John Brooks as well, who, like, actually look like on-the-field leaders. And I want more players like that. So I want Kellen Acosta in this team, but he shouldn't start. Uh, next on to the substitutes, uh, Paul Riola, he got 60 minutes. He's he's not good enough. Like, he, I don't get it. Like, he's fine in the MLS, but he just look He has no technical ability when he plays with us. I don't know if it's because the speed of play is higher and he just can't bring himself to adjust, but or maybe the physicality's at a higher level. He's just too slow now. But he's legitimately terrible in this team, and he shouldn't put on the shirt ever again. He's He's not good enough. Um, then, uh, Jesus Ferreira, I want to mention him because he is going to be a good player. 
you watch him, the talent is clear to see. Like, if you can't see the talent that Hayes Ferrer has, you're blind. And, like, scoring, what is it, like, 18 goals? That's impressive at a top level at any level. I don't care if it's the MLS. But he's not an international level nine, number nine. I don't think he's a number nine, period. I think that he should be playing in that secondary striker role. And I don't think he's going to score at the World Cup. I, he's not going to score at the World Cup. He should not be in this team at the moment. He's got a ton of potential. I would like to see him played as a number 10 behind somebody like a Falk or a Sergeant or a Haji Wright. But it, it's not going to happen for him. Uh, then it was really disappointing today was Mark McKenzie. He made too many mistakes, I think. I feel like this was a chance to really cement his role in the squad. Like, I'm from Philadelphia. I'm wearing a Philly shirt right now. Um, I want this guy to do well because, not only because he's from Philadelphia, but he's really technical on the ball. He's got the athleticism. He has everything that you need. Like, all the things that you can't teach, he has. But I don't want him on the field over Walker Zimmerman, and I'm not a fan of Walker Zimmerman. I he makes too many mistakes for me to want to add him to the personal, my personal 26, and I don't think he impressed Burhalter enough to make the team. Uh, then, thankfully, you know, I should say, we had one good performance today, and that was Joe Scally. And it was so refreshing to see him come on the field and actually try. Like, because so many of these players just felt like they were coasting through the game. Like, and him just coming on and showing effort... Even if it was just, like, I don't think it was this, but even if it was just, I need to prove that I should be on this team, he looked good, and he was actually making things happen, and he was trying, and he's a guy who Burhalter doesn't like, like, I, I think he was only trying out of spite of the manager, like, I don't know. He was really good, he should be our number two right back, and Dest is our number two left back, so he should also be are back up at both positions, basically. I want him on the field over DeAndre Yedlin, but I do want DeAndre Yedlin there as a as a veteran guy. Uh, Reggie Cannon, it's it's too bad. I saw his, like he still has potential, but we can't have him in the team at the moment. And uh, Brendan Aronson, Malik Tillman, I don't think they got to impact the game. I I liked how Brendan Aronson came on and was. I think he liked Scally. He was actually trying, but it it didn't impact it enough. So yeah, really bad performance today. Um, honestly, I don't feel confident heading into this World Cup. Like before this, like before this window, I thought like I'd say like we probably have like a forty-five percent chance to get out of the group, but it's higher than Wales and Iran. Like we're the second favorite to get out. It's still going to be tough. I don't think we can get out over. I don't think we're favorites to get out over Wales and Iran. Uh, I think that if we decide to play really defensively and frustrate Wales and hit them on the counter against a pretty weak defense that they have, Pulisic, Tim Weah, they can make something happen. We have enough creativity in the team where we can do better than them if we... We can win a game against them for sure if we counter them well. But if we do that, we're, we'll just be playing like the American teams of old, the teams of 2010, 2014, 2006... And we won't have changed the way the world views American soccer. And, yeah, that's why I believe Burhalter needs to be out of this team. And 2026 is going to be fun, but we just have to get through this right now. Uh, other than that, it was fun to have no VAR for this game. Like, I don't know. I don't think that's very controversial, but the rest were doing a good job. And there were some 50-50s, but I, I don't think it impacted the game. It was... It was fun, to, just refreshing to have a game like this where you don't have to stop a ton. And yeah, I guess uh, subscribe if you want to watch that U uh, me analyze that uh, analyze analyze that U uh, twenty game coming up. It's going to be a big. Uh, I wouldn't even call it a power cleanser. I'd call it a chaser. But that's going to be fun to watch a U twenty team. A lot of talent there. You get to see me be excited about a team, even though we lost the last one. There was still a lot of good. But uh, yeah, that's all I've talked about going to be interesting to rewatch and just get an overall assessment of this window but yeah it's not looking good right now so i'll talk about see you